Hi, I'm Wayne Wilkinson, and welcome to God, Guns, and American Freedom. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of God, Guns, and American Freedom. We're back at the Darby Farm for, for the High Cotton Classic itself this time. That's right, Wayne. The High Cotton Classic is one of the largest sporting clay events in South Carolina. But you know, it's, it's so much more than just shooting sporting clays. This is a very special place, a place where families can celebrate their Second Amendment rights, get together and just have a wonderful time in the outdoors. And you know, uh, people might recognize some of the locations around here because this is where Mel Gibson shot the Patriot. That's right, Park. Uh, what we're going to do in today's episode is we're going to spend some time with the shooters and the guests, find out for what they think makes the high cotton so special for them. For, for the viewers that are new to Sporting Clays, we're going to get you ready for your first trip to the Sporting Clays course. So stick around. It's God, Guns, and American Freedom. Folks, I want to get you ready for your first trip to the Sporting Clays course. So to do that, you need to understand the, the different clay targets that you're going to present. Of course, Sporting Clays is a shotgun sport where you're shooting clay targets either through the air or on the ground. The standard target that you're going to see at a Sporting Clays course is, is this one here. It's 110 millimeter. It's called an international target. This is your standard. This is what you'll see most of. The next target is a MIDI target. This is a 90 millimeter target. Uh, notice the difference. Of course, this will travel. This, it'll appear to travel faster and create a different, different illusion as it flies through the air. So compared to the standard target, this target is called the Mini. Same, same principle. As it's presented, uh, it, it, it too will appear to be flying faster. You can throw these targets from the same distance and this target will appear to be going faster and further away. It's all part of the illusion. Uh, some people struggle with these targets, some people do better with these targets. Um, it depends on uh, your concentration level. To me, I actually shoot these targets better because <laughs> there's, it's easier to concentrate on a smaller area. It's the, the principle in the Patriot, aim small, miss small, small target. Okay. Different target here is the Batu. Same size as the standard target, but notice the profile. This target is slimmer, it's like a frisbee without the edge. Okay. Uh, this target is it's thrown through the air. When it loses momentum, it's going to uh, it's going to lose speed and it's going to turn on its side and drop. Okay, so that's the Batu target. Another target that you're going to see looks like a Batu, but this is a rabbit target. This target is actually presented along the ground. It's going to bounce along the ground, and each time it's thrown, it could be presented differently. So this is the rabbit target. So with that, these are the targets you're going to see: the Batu, the rabbit the standard target, the MIDI target, and the MINI. We're here with Bill Davis, uh, owner of Pure Gold Choke Tubes. We're tailgating at the High Cotton. Bill, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Wayne, for having me. It's an honor to be here. You betcha. Um, Bill, tell us about your um, the new choke tube that you've come out with in cooperation with Federal. Sure, we've got a new choke out. It's called the Vortex. It's manufactured specifically for the black cloud ammo. Um, right now, that's the waterfowl ammo Federal has out at the time, and it does a really super job. And we'll have one out in the spring for the turkey season as well. While I'm here and, and we're talking about guns and stuff, Wayne, I've got a question for you. How does a Christian person, a God-fearing person like myself, answer the question when I'm asked, how do God, guns, and American freedom go together? Right. Well, you know, Bill, um, for me, the the our rights and, and 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 even the word the title of the show, God, Guns, and American Freedom. To me, that goes right back to the heart of our country. Uh, our forefathers, when they created the country, you know, it started with the Declaration of Independence. And in the direct Declaration, they say they state that we are endowed with certain inalienable rights, rights that are given to us by God, and those rights are the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the Second Amendment, you know, the right to bear arms didn't start with 
you know, the United States. It started with free people back in the days of Rome and Greece. So when I look at it and say in our country we've got, you know, uh, the right to bear arms and today it's guns. It's really to protect those God-given inalienable rights of li life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, Wayne, let me ask you this question. Who are we protecting ourselves from, or what are we protecting ourselves from? Well, there's always, you know, so there's really three things to the, the, the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment was created for three reasons. One is it was provision, you know, so that we could always uh, provide for ourselves, hunt ducks, turkeys, deer, whatever. Right. Right. Uh, the other part was personal protection, so we could we could defend ourselves from the bad guy that wants to knock down our door and, our, and invade our homes. But it's also created to protect us from tyranny, and and, and it essentially, you know, our forefathers understood in giving us the Second Amendment. They had just fought a revolution to, to set us free from England, and they understood that in order for people to be free, they must be armed. So uh, the difference between a citizen and a servant is the ability to protect yourself. To defend yourself against the government. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so they understood that, and they created those, the right to bear arms in an effort to defend our God-given right. I see. That, that makes good sense, Aunt Wayne. You've you got to understand from a Christian point of view, we're not the bad guys here. Right. We're the good guys. We simply want to use these guns for our own personal pleasure and our self-defense. It's very important for us to keep those rights in order to defend ourselves, like you said, from bad guys as well as our own government if it ever becomes to the point we need it. Right. Well, thanks for asking the question, Bill. Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate your time to, take, to answer it for me. You bet, buddy. A lot of good food. I uh, see a lot of people from all over South Carolina and North Carolina that come down here and shoot. And we're doing a lot of good for local charities. Just being with my friends, I'm shooting with them this afternoon. I've shot some of the earlier events today. I, I've had a good time so far. I was here at 9 o'clock in the morning, and I don't shoot till 1 o'clock, but mainly the people. I sort of think this is what the Lord thinks we're supposed to do on a Saturday afternoon. It's just to get together and have a good time and enjoy ourselves. Just being around all these men it just made me realize what I needed to be when I was going to grow up, you know. And you see a lot of good examples out here. He's a southern gentleman, learned to shake a man in the head, like shake his hand and look him in the eye. High cotton's special for me because it's really been a huge family thing for me. My brother does high cotton. I've got cousins who do it, and my uncle. I mean, my whole family does this, so it's really great for me to come out here and see them and just be a part of something important to the town and everything. It's so special because we get to come out here, you know, shoot some clays. You get to see all these people that you see every year. It's good fellowship. Get some really good food, and it's just a lot of fun to come out here. I get to meet a lot of new friends and have fun, learn something new, and. You know, these people are amazing out here. I mean, they, they're very, very nice, southern gentlemen. Hey, you know what? Once a year we get to come out here and have a great time, right? Sir, this is the place, sir. Good Lord. Look what the good Lord did today. Yeah. Welcome to the 19th Annual Hot Cotton Classic. Let's open with prayer today, gentlemen. Please remove your hats and let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, you blessed us in a lot of ways, and once again, you blessed us with a beautiful sunrise. We thank you for your creation. This is the day that you have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Make sure you got your safety glasses. Make sure you got your earplugs. Make sure you got enough shells. You'll need four or five boxes on the court, preferably five. Wait till you hear a shot. Get at it. Bring them on, big boy.
Guys, don't look at my dentist. <laughs> Right back with more God Guns and American Freedom. All right, folks. You've seen a lot of shooting today. You're ready to go try it for yourself. So what do you need before you go shoot sporting clays at a local facility? First of all, whatever shotgun you have is probably fine. Anything from a, a 410 up to a 12 gauge. Probably you, you probably want to leave the 10 gauge goose gun at home, but any shotgun is good. Don't get hung up in uh, elitism or any of that kind of stuff. If you got grandpa's old pump shotgun, get it out of the closet and go shoot it. What I've got here is different guns. I've got a 20 gauge side by side, which is fine. I've got a 12 gauge over and under specifically for sporting clays. I've got a 12 gauge semi-automatic, which is great for sporting clays. I've got my, da my dad's old pump 20 gauge from the 1950s. Great gun, my favorite gun. It's an heirloom for me. All these are acceptable for sporting clays. Of course, some are better than others. The more you shoot, the more competitive you are, the, the more, at that point you'll want to invest in a gun. But the whole point of sporting clays is to get out there and try it, to get out there and use the gun you got, the gun you use for hunting, and have a good time. Now you'll want eye protection, ear protection, some kind of vest, something to carry your shells in, a bag, something like that. When you uh, when you show up the, at the facility, be safe. Leave your gun on empty until you get to the first station. Um, get some instruction, get some help from the facility before you hit the course. Target loads, you want to bring target loads. Anything you would shoot uh, on uh, dove loads would be fine for shooting sporting clays. Seven and a half, eight, nine shot um, for 12 gauge ounce with an eighth, 20 gauge, seven eighths ounce that kind of thing. Um, anything larger than uh, seven and a half ounce is not allowed in sporting clays. So that's the whole point of it. The point of sporting clays is to get out, try it yourself, have a good time, use the gun you got, get hooked on a sport, and then you'll grow from there. Then you'll start buying new guns and, and going deeper into it. I hope that makes sense. Head to the course, go online, find a course near you, and go break some clays. You know, Park. I today is great, but tomorrow I'm looking forward to the, to the Trapper Day. I don't know what you're what you like about the high cotton the best, but well, that that to me, you know, I, as a teacher for 16 years, I you know, I care very deeply about kids. I know you do as well, and you know to to see these young folks come out here and get so actively involved, and you know what's happening is they're learning a lot of things while they're having fun. That's the great thing about this is that we're sneaking in these values, and they're seeing that you know what. You can have a, a very fulfilled, peaceful, fun life and not be out of control. Um, and this is one way to do that. And so I'm really excited about what is happening today and especially tomorrow, as you said, with the trappers. I got 60 something young people between the ages of uh, 13 and 18 out here working today, right. teaching them uh, the value of service. As a Christian, I was very pleased with the, the way these gentlemen bring these kids along as trappers and, and give them the, the foundations with good gun safety and also with integrity. And I've, I've supported them you know, for the last two years with my, you know, and supported my son, and we've really enjoyed our time here. Good job, Patrick, you up? He's gonna scare a rabbit up out of that hole, that pump rabbit's gonna go up that trail for blister. A little hint, a little hint, shoot the rabbit first. All the kids get together, learn gun safety, uh, watching the kids uh, teach gun safety to, uh, to their friends and even to the adults and stuff, and then just, Listening to uh, how they express themselves and making, you know, and, and the adults are just sitting there and, and learn. Made a real difference in your son's life, hasn't it? Oh, it really has. He's uh, really become a, a much more rounded person and a better, better individual for this. It makes your job a little easier, too, doesn't it? Just a wee bit. <laughs> It 
really changed my life and everything I do. And I thought I was living the right life, you know. Now it's changed, okay? Good influences, right? What, yeah, just look what these guys did for me. Well, I tell you. What we try to do. We try to teach these young men a life like we like to live. The values, the morals, uh, the manners, um, just a good day of fun. They learn how to be uh, young men and young women out here, to treat people with respect, to have honor and integrity and dignity. Uh, and I just, I, I can't say enough about how important and how special that is to me. I've spoken with Bill Davis about God and guns, and earlier today I spoke with Park Gillespie about what American freedom means to him. You know, the, the phrase American freedom is a very pregnant phrase, and it, it's not a cheap thing. When I, when I teach, and I, I'm still doing some teaching on the side of the University Model School, um, I drew a pyramid on the board, and uh, I said, kids, I want you to imagine yourself as being the very tip top of the pyramid, because of all the people who have ever lived, you are part of the very few that have ever had the privilege of living in a land like this. A land where freedom isn't just something that we're aspiring to, it's something that we have and that we're trying to maintain and keep. And in these days, we're seeing that, that challenge. And that's a real concern for me, that we honor the, the principles that our founding fathers gave us and that at the same time, we honor the better angels of our nature that, that Lincoln spoke so eloquently about. And where is that line, you know, in the age of terror, how do we, how do we balance um, an individual's right to, to privacy and to freedom versus trying to maintain order and stuff? And I think one of the things that we're trying to do is, is to, to show that, look, the guiding light that we all have is the history of this nation. You know, the good, bad, and the ugly, all the warts and all. And if we use that as a rudder, as a lighthouse, I, I think it will help us um, better handle better deal with kind of the questions that we're, we're being asked to answer these days. This is a very unique world. America, America has got to remain free. It's got to be, as Reagan so often said, that city on a hill that the rest of the world can look to. If that light goes out, God help the world. And so I think we're doing a small part here in playing that role and in trying to remind people of this is the great gift that we've been given. Let's not forget that. Liberty and freedom start at home. If you're not actively involved in the county council and the school board and, and places like that, um, don't be surprised when it extrapolates to a national level. And that's one of the things that I think we have an advantage in is that when we talk about these things at a local level, we encourage people to get involved. Um, that's working from the bottom up and that's the best way to handle an issue. Um, Washington spoke at length and our founding fathers did at length about the fact that, you know, we're, like Madison said, we're basing the future of our country on the people's ability to govern themselves in light of the Ten Commandments. I mean, these are, you need to give somebody something timeless to root themselves into so that they're firmly grounded. When they deal with these different things that are happening now, they need principles to guide them. And if they do that, then they're gonna be much more effectively engaged. And I hope people will make a real effort to do that. Learn the history of this nation. And the things that are wrong, then let's work together to make them right. Let's not overreact to some of the things and make things worse. Why is it so important to have a sense of humor? Well, you know, somebody wise a long time ago said, I have no clue who said it, faith, family, and friends, everything else is just stuff. And the important thing to realize is this, at the end of the day, um, that which binds us, the things that are most important to us, the things that we think about on our deathbed, frankly, um, are the eternal things, and that's family, and that's faith, and the friendships, and the, the things, the, the connections we were able to make here. And I think it's critically important that we realize that we need to enjoy, look at what we have. I mean, I've done refugee work in East Africa. I've been to the Sudan war zones um, and, and, and held starving babies, the, the kind that you see in these ads, you know, feed the children and stuff. I've been there. We have very little to complain about in this country. Okay, and I think it's about time we get a perspective of the blessings that we have and realize we have so much to be thankful for. You know what, you're, you're not gonna be here, but for a little bit of time, enjoy it. And so even when you get into hot discussions about things, realize that every man and woman on this earth was made in the image of a holy God. They have, as the Latins would say, the imago dei, the image of the holy one on them. Therefore, they have value and they have worth. Why would I treat them any less than their creator would? So enjoy. Love, live, and laugh. <laughs> and what would you say 
to other ladies that think that shooting is just a man's sport. I would say this is one of the few sports that you can compete on and you're shooting the same kind of gauge, same gun, it puts you at an equal level. You can't do that on very many sports and I'll tell you what, our best days are when we make the men wear a pin that says beat by a girl. We love to shoot. We need more ladies shoot next year. Hey, we want to remind you that we're going to be adding segments and features to God, Guns, and American Freedom, and we want to hear from you about what you'd like to see and hear on the show. We want to explore issues, meet interesting people, and go to great American places and events. If you have any ideas or suggestions for the show, please reach us at feedback at godgunsandamericanfreedom.com. We'll be right back. Hey folks, we've had another great day at the High Cotton Classic. You know, I wish I could bottle the sights and sounds of this event, carry it around with me, and share it with you as I travel around South Carolina. Yeah, the 19th edition of the High Cotton Classic has been a fantastic day. Um, not only have we raised a lot of money for good charities and for great causes in this area, but we've had more than that. We've had a great time as friends and family. It's been a fabulous day as far as the weather goes. But folks, what we hope you'll get out of this is that you'll get actively involved in the shooting sports. This is something you want to do. That's right, Park. Folks, I hope you'll get that old shotgun out of the closet, go to the internet, find your local shooting facility, and go have a good time with friends and family and, and break some clay targets. Now, we, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of God, Guns, and American Freedom, and we'll see you down the road.